Two years ago, Sam and I were shuffling all of our belongings onto an old school bus. It was 3 a.m., we were averaging about four hours of sleep a night, and to top it all off, the bus conversion wasn't even complete. But we just couldn't wait any longer. It was time to go. For three and a half months, we roamed the U.S. landscape. We were in search of this adventure we had so vividly in our heads. And boy, did we find it. Right, guys it's an early morning here in uh, Jackson Hole Wyoming and it is snowing <laughs> we have our first snow in the bus we're up on a little bit of a hill uh, but yeah it's it's beautiful out here besides us possibly getting stuck so it's, it always gets cold unless you pump the heat up um, even with the heat going now that the sun's out a little bit and it stopped snowing it's actually very pretty out here Our journey quickly became more than just a trip. It opened us up to new ideas and lifestyles. Whether it's the van life movement, a school bus conversion, or just sleeping in the trunk of a Prius, we were fascinated by the creativity behind this nomadic lifestyle. we made it uh, it's probably super windy and I probably won't be able to use this footage later but um yeah all the way at the top not as far as you can go but pretty close and it is 37 degrees with about 15 mile an hour wind so it's cold all right guys we are uh, about two miles into our uh, about a mile and a half into our uh, three-day hike it's gonna be 26 miles round trip um, 
we're going to Merced Lake, and uh, yeah, this is the first. This is the first falls that uh, we, you come to on the hike. Our hike sparked up a lot of conversation about the bus. We talked about what we would do different if we had the chance to do it all over again. After just a few weeks on the road, it became really clear that we made the bus too complicated. It's amazing how simple life on the road can be. We came to the conclusion that we only needed the bus to serve two functions, sleeping and eating. With that in mind, we knew there was a better solution. A solution that would let us go places the bus couldn't. A solution that could take our ability to explore to the next level. Although we love traveling in the bus, a 30-foot vehicle has its limitations. We felt if we simplified down to our most basic needs, we would end up with a more compact vehicle that we could take more places. As we debated, Sam leaned towards a Sprinter van conversion and I leaned towards a teardrop trailer, both being much smaller than the bus. Hey guys, we're here in Bryce Canyon, uh, Utah. It is windy, so I apologize for any wind noise we're trying to do this <laughs> down when there aren't there isn't much wind but anyway we're here it was nine degrees last night we had the heater running thank god we bought some propane for that last night uh it was like 65 degrees in the bus which was nice ryan left one of the windows open all night so that didn't help the heat and um you say something about that ryan someone didn't notice someone didn't notice ryan didn't he's blaming it on me for not telling him that he forgot uh <laughs> But um, anyway, so we're here in Bryce Canyon doing the Fairyland Loop Trail. It's about eight miles. This can take us four to five hours. Hopefully not longer than four though because sunset's coming and when sunset comes, it drops from 35 degrees down to 20 and then at night it's down to nine degrees Fahrenheit. Based off of the post-World War II teardrop trailer design, this design focuses on simplicity. It's light enough to be pulled behind a car and small enough to go pretty much anywhere. Touching back on the fact that we really only use the bus to sleep and eat, the teardrop focuses on those two actions. The cabin creates a cozy sleeping area, while the outdoor galley kitchen makes a good place to prep a meal. That's pretty much it. There's no bells and whistles, just a simple design created with quality materials. Thank you. 
We're really happy with how the trailer turned out and are already planning to build another. I'm also hoping to document the build process better as well. But anyway, on this trailer, we were held to with the constraints of a more common four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. But with the next, we're looking to use five by 10 sheets. These larger sheets allow for a queen size bed as well as more storage area in the trailer. I'm still looking to source these larger sheets but since they may be harder to get in low quantities, we're also considering to build three trailers instead of one. So I guess if you're interested in a custom-made teardrop trailer, just send us an email. For now, we're just excited to get this thing out and off the beaten path.